Hello to all. Ну, давай, может, я представлюсь, и тогда запустишь. Окей. Okay. Hello to all. Hey, my name is Dima. I'm from Israel, and uh, I'm a psychologist at Haifa Military Command Academy. Uh, here with me, uh, there is uh, Achinoam, that's a cadet in our uh, academy, and Mark, that is a cadet also. Uh, let's uh, watch a short uh, movie about our uh, academy, and then uh, we will tell you some more.
Okay, <coughs> so uh, how I said uh, before, my name is Dima and I'm a psychologist at Haifa Military Command Academy. Our institute established in 1953 by David Ben-Gurion, who then was a minister of defense uh, in Israel. He noticed that he has not enough uh, good combat commanders in uh, then young Israeli army. The army was five years old then. Uh, so he decided to prepare young people to the military service in the way that uh, will let them to be good command uh, combat uh, officers. Uh, and actually from then, uh, sorry, some technical uh, issue. Uh, can you help me with, uh, with forwarding the slides? Because I don't know why, but the clicker doesn't work for me. I will try it again. Uh, Richard, can you forward the slide, please? Oh. Uh. Okay, so as I said, at the last uh, at the last sixty seven years, our goal remains the same and is to choose the best young uh, men and women that we can find and uh, prepare them to the military service in the way that will let them to be. Uh, the best combat officers in our uh, army. Uh, it is important uh, to say that uh, our cadets, when they finish uh, our academy, they not uh, recruit as officers, they recruit as simple soldiers and need to get a uh, military career by themselves. So our goal is to let give him the tools and the mindset that will allow them to do so. I'm sorry, the slides are stuck again. Okay, uh, I will uh, tell some something about our elimination process. Not everyone who wants to learn in our academy can do so. Uh, actually, we start uh, every year with 350 can candidates and have a pretty comple complex elimination process. The first step of it is uh, uh, psychological and psychotechnical tests. Sorry, not the right way. Uh, and the candidates who can succeed on those tests, something like 250 proceed to the next step. Uh, that we call a field day. It's a day in our academy when we bring the candidates to us and let them to participate in some group dynamics, some uh, physical uh, contests, uh, some small military tasks. And from then we choose uh, something about 150 candidates who we bring to our academy at the summer, to summer camp. It's three weeks that they live here uh, by military rules, sleep here, eat here, uh, the morning they learn at the school uh, mathematics, gr grammar, and English. And uh, at the afternoon, they participate in a lot of military activities. And at the end of those three weeks, uh, our staff uh, choose uh, those who will start uh, the educational process. Uh, teachers and officers choose uh, something about 60 cadets that starts uh, every year at our school. So we are, what we are doing with them? <laughs> our uh, educational process uh, lasts for three years uh, at uh, 10th, 11th and 12th grade. Uh, so our cadets are 16, 17 and 18 years old. And uh, the educational process uh, deals with four main fields. 
the first field is ethics, uh, military ethics and the ethics in general. Uh, we spent a lot of time to help our cadets uh, develop a sense of uh, responsibility, personal responsibility, responsibility uh, over others, responsibility over the community, uh, over their environment, and uh, talk with them a lot about the responsibility that they will have when they're going to be in a position of power uh, at the army. The second field is uh, the military profession. Uh, as I said before, uh, they start the army as simple soldiers. So uh, they should be the best soldiers in their units. So we teach them to shoot. They, hit, they have uh, field craft workshops. Uh, they learn basic and operational orienteering and even have a diving course in 12th grade. The third field is the mental strength. Uh, we believe that this is very important for combat uh, commanders and officers uh, to be able to cope with the uh, difficulties, uh, challenges, and failures. So we uh, basically teach them to stand up again and again uh, after every fall and uh, let them to fall a lot. And the last a uh, field is uh, their leadership uh, uh, abilities. Uh, at the end, they supposed to be able to lead others. So we teach them to stand in front of people, to make up their minds, to make difficult decisions, uh, and basically make others to follow them. And uh, now I, I will give the stage to the cadets. I think this is a more interesting part uh, than uh, my speech. And the first of them is uh, Mark, a cadet from 11th grade, who will tell you about our uh, routine and training. Mark? Mark, do you hear me? I think it's um, internet issues because this video is stuck. Yeah, you try to speak, but uh, you can. So let's say. Uh, oh, can you hear me right now? Back. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Sorry for the issue. Um, uh, some technical difficulties. Okay, so how Dim, uh, Dima already pre presented me. My name is Mark. Um, I'm in 11th grade uh, in the uh, Sufa company. And I'll talk to you guys about um, our routine and training. Um, basically, our routine is wake, we wake up in the morning, make our bed, um, clean our rooms, and then we go to, to breakfast, eat breakfast, and go straight to school. Uh, in school, we learn all kinds of subjects. Uh, we also learn with other students who are not cadets in our school. Um, our uh, academy works with another school called, was called uh, the Reality School, um, which other students who are not cadets in our academy go to. And we learn them uh, all kinds of different subjects and uh, like math, uh, all, all the, regular stuff, the regular stuff. Um, but one subject that we, we, we the cadets learn alone is called um, Army. Um, it's about uh, our, uh, our army tactics and about uh, historical uh, army fights, um, like our uh, uh, our Yom Kippurim War in '73 and about the Lebanon War. Um, so that's about it. That's our like routine in school. And then we go back to school uh, to the to the academy. Um, we eat our uh, lunch and we go to our um, all kind of activities. Uh, first, we have we have a time where we do our, our homework, uh, all kind of homework. 
and uh, and then after that we go to maybe um, uh, PT um, physical training um, and then uh, it can be maybe after that we go take a shower and then we maybe go to a lecture about uh, about life or about army stuff um, and then after that we have our uh, our supper and then we go back to to bed and then we have like before bed we have one hour which we do all kind of stuff that everything does um just like uh, play games you know, talk to our parents on our phone or play a uh, video game on the computer uh, so that's one hour of the day where we have like our, our own time to do something that we want and then we go to bed uh at uh, 10 10 p.m something like that Okay, so about our training, our main uh, part, I think, of the, of the academy. Um, as Dino showed you, uh, in, the, in the 10th grade, the first year, we focus on a lot of uh, basic stuff, um, which is a lot of uh, field, field work. Um, we get training, uh, we start training our shooting, our uh, ability to hide in the field, in the in all cognitive terrains. So we start learning about our enemy and how he can hide and how we can identify him. Um, it's a lot of the basic stuff which we uh, which creates discipline and uh, our like our our base for our future uh, things that we learn. Um, and and then we in the eleventh grade, the second year. Which is my year. Uh, we start. We start diving more about. To we start diving into more uh, commanding uh, uh, training. Uh, right now we have uh, a training uh, a training part tomorrow uh, next week that we uh, actually uh, as commanders we try to manage a fight. We try to as as commanders we're not, we're trying to handle the fight. We are creating. Uh, we are learning how to attack an enemy, how to, to how to attack a base or a certain place, and how how and how we can do it, and how in what tactics and what is the order in order in order to to to, to start our um, attack. Um, and that's uh, the training in eleventh grade. And then we then we have the third year, which is more of. Um, more uh, of uh, an officer uh, officer training which is a lot more big a lot more, a lot bigger than uh, than a normal uh, commander um, it's a lot bigger we try to handle a lot bigger things or a, a lot bigger fights and uh, the training is a lot more uh, harder um, every year it gets harder and harder and harder because we have to, we have to think a lot more, um, and uh, develop our own kind of uh, thinking. And we try to not depend on our commanders, but depend on, on ourselves uh, to to make to when we go, to, because when we get to the army, we need to come ready and show that show everyone that we are uh, really really unique uh, people in the, in our society. And uh, when we go to the army, we have the advantage of uh, actually working uh, alone and showing that the academy is uh, doing its job at uh, making us uh, disciplined and uh, and a lot more um, self um, dependent. And uh, that's about it. Yeah, we go to Akinola. We will talk about uh, women in the, in the Pneumia, in the, in the academy. So you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like Mark said, um, uh, I'm 16 years old and in the 10th grade, I would like to talk a little bit what it's like to be a girl in a military boarding school. And in my company, a thick company, there are only eight girls, included me, which creates a lot of competition. And it's challenging to be a girl in a mixed 
next year in environment, especially when the big consider a men's field. But precisely because of this, there is an added value to the fact that we are here, not only for personal development and not only for being good commanders in the IDF, which no less important, but also to break the glass ceiling. In every military exercise, we prove that the fact we are girls not say nothing about the things we can do. I think it's part of our job. Job, girls, the benefits we bring with us because we are girls, wherever in the way of thinking or in the way of action, that the boys will not always think this way. For example, in the last million exercise, we had to carry heavy bags for four days and we carried just like the boys without special relief. Because we're girls, even most of the time, I carried more, uh, and it's just the beginning of that we can do. And it sounds like it's an add to the stress, the feeling that we have to be tough and strong so that they not say we are weak, but it's pushed a lot to succeed and to break our, our own records. And it helps not to give up, even when it's difficult or not. And like Dima said, but it's all part of the fun in the end. That's it. Okay. Thanks, Achinoam. Uh, if you have any questions, we, we can answer them now or later. Uh, we will stay to hear uh, other participants. Okay, here we are, hi to all participants of our conference. I am Lieutenant Colonel Taras Hrycevich. You see my post is Deputy Head of the Lyceum for Educational Work. And you see, I suppose you see uh, the name of our Lyceum, Krute Heroes Lviv State Lyceum with intensive military and physical training. And I would like to introduce you our Lyceum, like uh, line by line and word by word from our name. So now I turn on my clicker and hope that our slides will be work properly let's try oh the next slide okay the first line you see is crude heroes who are crude heroes and why our lyceum is named by uh, them uh, you see that uh, there was young cadets in 1918, who stand, uh, stood for defense of 
young Ukrainian country, and uh, their heroism was in uh, that uh, the enemy troops was a tenfold superior over them. As we had about four to five hundred our warriors, uh, the enemy troops, Bolshevik Red Army, was uh, about five thousand warriors. And in that battle, our Ukrainian young heroes, who was actually the same age of our cadets of our Lyceum, about 15, 16, maybe 17, 18 years old, they fought uh, strong, and uh, some of them, uh, around 30 uh, of heroes, was died in that battle. But as you see, uh, they uh, stopped or delayed advance of Bolshevik Red Army for about four days, and uh, it uh, led our Ukrainian government in that time to uh, contract uh, some peace uh, agreement with uh, foreign countries and uh, for some time uh, save our Ukrainian uh, People Republic in 1918. And uh, interestingly, so that uh, the uh, logo, or you uh, see here, coat of arm of our Lyceum in the left uh, upper corner. It is uh, by its central element is the same as what the cap badge of those warriors in 1918. And uh, as our Lyceum is named by them, we wear the same symbol is Archangel Mikael, and on his coat of arm, uh, there is a lion as a symbol of Western Ukrainian People Republic. So in this symbol uh, was united whole Ukraine, Ukraine, the lion as a Western Ukraine and the Archangel Mike, uh, Michael as a central Ukraine, as a symbol of Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. So is our historical predecessors, is our historical roots. And uh, now uh, we proceed to the our today's. And uh, you see the next line is that we are Lviv State Lyceum. Okay, we are situated in Lviv, our military school. Uh, you, as you can see on this picture, first of all, you can see a map of Ukraine and plainly see that Lviv is uh, uh, western part in a western part of Ukraine and uh, near the Carpathian Mountains uh, by our region. And you can see the picture of a uh, so great panorama of our uh, school, our military school, our lyceum, uh, where on the uh, on front of this picture you can see our sports facilities. Then uh, you can see our buildings. It's a educational building, a living building, our sport uh, hall, and uh, some other buildings, uh, which comprises our compound where our cadets live and learn and spend their all time when he, uh, they uh, learn in our Lyceum. Then we proceed to the Lviv as an administrative center of Lviv region, Lviv Oblast, and uh, the main cultural center, uh, one of the main cultural centers of Ukraine. Uh, you can see uh, the symbols of uh, Lviv region here on the slide. 
And uh, I must admit that we are proud that the central part of our uh, city is in uh, UNESCO uh, cultural heritage, world heritage. And uh, we uh, uh, promote, uh, we uh, advise our cadets to be acquainted with this cultural uh, facilities and uh, use them in our educational process. Also, Lviv is the important center of military education. And uh, here we have Hetman Petrosa Gaidashne National Army Ac Academy, uh, which is the biggest and uh, the most powerful higher educational institution uh, for Ukrainian army. And uh, uh, in the Lviv region, there is a biggest in Ukraine uh, military polygon or military uh, training field, which uh, uh, is named as uh, International Peacekeeping and Security Center, where our cadets, when they uh, after 10th grade have some military camp, they uh, have possibility to develop their military skills. Then we proceed to the next line of next portion of our name. And uh, what does mean that we are state lyceum? Uh, I must, must uh, admit that all military education in Ukraine starts on the school level uh, and we have two main types of military schools. The first time is so-called uh, military lyceums and the second one is uh, lyceums with intensive military and physical training. What is the difference? The military lyceums are subordinate to the Ministry of Defense and uh, they are more strictly organized as a military unit and uh, more closely like the military academy. Uh, while uh, our type of uh, school uh, Lyceum with intensive military and physical training is rather closer to the common school, but with uh, some advanced uh, military and physical education. Uh, you can see also uh, our some historical uh, data, and uh, uh, you can see that our Lyceum was established in 1992 as a military lyceum, so we was the first type of military school, and then in 1996 it was reorganized to the lyceum with intensive military and physical training. Our motto is "He youth learns to win," so we uh, learn our cadets not to give up before uh, some problems to fight enemies, uh, not only the physical enemies, but also uh, psychological enemy, uh, which every cadet bears in his own soul. Uh, our core values we listed here uh, is honor, greed, development, leadership, and patriotism. And we... Uh, uh, a lot of our attention at, and uh, time of our curricula is uh, dedicated to bringing the best moral um, traits of our cadets to make them leaders of character, to make them future warriors, future defenders of Ukraine. Then the information about uh, some uh, uh, terms of education as the Israeli Academy, we uh, have 
three years uh, education for those cadets who are enrolled after age grade to our Lyceum. So uh, some of our cadets uh, learn uh, from uh, ninth to 11th grade, three years, and some of them only uh, on uh, 10th and 11th grades. Uh, graduates of our Lyceum mainly uh, are motivated and expected to enroll to military higher educational institutions and uh, we have about 80 percent uh, of 80 percent of uh, our graduates who uh, enters the military academies academies of uh, ministry of inner affairs uh, uh, academies of different uh, sector of security and uh, what does mean that we have intensive military and physical training uh, very similar as other israeli uh, counterparts we have daily routine and schedule closely approximate to military units uh, we have all, uh, early getting ups, morning exercises and running, military formations, rosters, salutations, etc. All as in military units. Uh, then uh, we have a uh, vast uh, program to uh, give our cadets uh, good military skills and uh, the main profiling course for our cadets has the name defending of ukraine and it, it uh, includes five hours weekly and also two weeks of military field training camp which as i mentioned before uh, we held on the uh, facilities of national army academy and uh, then the last big uh, part of our education is intensive physical training. You can see that we have up to five hours of classes weekly, plus different sports sections, outdoor activities like strike ball, competitions, etc. And I now uh, want to give a floor to my uh, students, our, our students, cadets. You can see them. It's uh, Ivan and Mikhailo. So first will be Ivan who tell you about uh, how we, uh, how we learn or how we develop physical skills uh, during our lessons of uh, physical culture. Please. Okay, hi there. My name is Ivan, and I am going to talk with you about physical education in our Lyceum. In our Lyceum, physical fitness training is used effectively as our PT lessons are mainly based on uh, our commander's uh, experience. PT lessons include the elements of our load, progress, balance, variety, and uh, regularity. We have PT four times a week and the physical fitness every morning at 6 a.m. Certain factors are part of physical fitness training which make us successful. Before any physical training, we have warm up which helps prevent injuries and maximize performance. Students should cool down properly after each period regardless of workout. During our trainings, we have individual testing and teamwork drills. At the weekend, we have sport competition and play different team games. Volleyball, football, basketball, and ping pong. We have different sport equipment in our Lyceum. They are indoors and outdoors. That's good for our students as they can stay in a good condition wherever the weather is. The aims of physical training in our Lyceum are to maintain the physical ability and stamina, 
to promote unit cohesiveness and discipline to maintain the highest level of physical fitness. In our lyceum, we have military training subjects. These subjects help our students succeed as future soldiers in the army or in life. Basic military skills are very important for them. The BMT provides leadership in a group situation. Every day we have drills and we take part in ceremonies. So Lyceum gives us a good chance to improve our sport results and health. I am proud to study here. Hello everybody, my name is Michal and I want to add to what my friend have said about sport life in Lviv Crude Heroes Lyceum. Firstly, I want to start with sports section. At RSM you can practice in boxing, free fight, wrestling, hand-to-hand -hand combat, football, volleyball, fire wrestling and other. Every sport club has a professional coach who with many years uh, experience who helps you to become a champion. The level of our preparing is very high because many cadets take part in the national tournaments. Also, I can't forget about our sporting ground and tools like horizontal and parallel bars, football and basketball ground, the wrestling court and each other. We also hold various tournaments several times a year. In one turn, we have a football in September, October, Atom Cross in October, in November, Arm Racing in November, Ping Pong and Shooting we have in December. In two terms, we have a volleyball in January, February, uh, weightlifting in February and March, military sports race in March, April, pull ups in April, and spring cross in May. During tournaments, all platoons compete with each other. Finally, in the Last tournament, the best platoon was chosen and the tournament table of winners was made. Winners are also given other prizes such as chocolate, medals, cups and other. All sports events are held under the supervision of coaches and nurses who provide security. I think it is the best way to the rise the uh, fighting spirit of the team. I want to note that the Lyceum has its own table of records. As well, it is a good challenge for the other cadets to improve their results, to be, uh, become healthier and stronger.
Hello, my name is Lieutenant Colonel Jim Kevisek. I'm a senior Army instructor here at St. John's Northwestern Military Academy. I've been here for 25 years. I retired from the Army in 1993, and I've been teaching young, young uh, people ever since then. Uh, a little bit about the history of the school. The school has been here since 1884. It was started by an Episcopalian priest, and shortly thereafter, it became a military academy. Uh, over the years in 1916, uh, based upon one of the acts here, National Defense Act, the, it, this school was designated by the United States government as a military institute. And in fact, over the years, in fact, through World War II, if anybody graduated from here, they went directly, it became, they received an army commission and were uh, uh, fighting in World War II. In 1995, uh, we merged with another academy in Wisconsin which is called Northwestern Military and Naval Academy, and that's why we have titled Northwest, St. John's Northwestern Military Academy. Um, in 2018, we opened it up to females, and um, ever since then, the last two years, it's been working out very well. Uh, currently, we have students from eight different countries. We basically teach leadership here using the United States Army military model. So we're organized, our cadets are organized in a battalion, which can range anywhere from 200 to 400 cadets, and it goes down to companies, which can be from four companies, two companies, to eight companies, platoons, squads, etc. Like I said, we have cadets, based upon the years, we're 200 to 400 strong. Uh, we use the United States Army JRTC curriculum to teach leadership. Now, I have to tell you something about that curriculum. We, uh, it's, it's professionally developed by educators. In fact, this year we're receiving brand new curriculum. Um, it's, it's there to really teach leadership and character development. Uh, what happens is we teach it in the classroom, but the unique thing about this place is that once we teach it, it's applied up in the barracks. And there it's applied and we have professional people upstairs in the barracks we call Attached trainers, advisors, and counselors who will actually evaluate and do character assessments and leadership assessments on a quarterly basis. So the cadet knows exactly how he's doing and how he's developing, and, and so do their parents. Now, another thing we teach, in addition to leadership here, is we run a two other extracurricular activities. It's called Raiders, which is a high adventure sort of a thing, and uh, somebody's going to talk to you about that. And we have a drill team, and that, it just builds character. It takes people out of their comfort zone. And really, I've seen so many boys uh, and girls just grow so big, so greatly because of uh, their participation in these activities. So I would like you to now, I'd like you to meet our first captain, who is the Corps Commander this year. My name is Eric Baker, and I'm the Battalion Commander of the 137th Corps of Cadets. I started off my career here at St. John's in a program called the Raiders Program. Raiders School is a 10-day program of a lower rendition of the United States Army Rangers, full of obstacle courses, long runs, and plenty of calisthenics. As a man of smaller stature and smaller confidence at the time, it was very difficult for me, but I made it through to the end. And after that, I became a better person because of it. I started off my first year here as a sophomore. In my sophomore year, I was immediately promoted to the rank of sergeant and given the promotion of squad leader. A squad leader's job is to lead up to five cadets in the, their everyday life, such as drill, discipline, room standards, and any other issues of their life. As a squad leader that year, I had a little bit of difficulty as it was my first year. However, the JRTC curriculum that I was learning at the time assisted me in my ability to understand that those I was leading, that I need to have a personal connection with them, that those are people in my squad, that that was your family at the time. JRTC helped me realize this. Going on to my second year, I was promoted to the rank of first sergeant. The first sergeant's job is discipline, drill, training, room standards, company administration, company accountability at all times meaning I need to know where everyone is at all times of the day. As a first sergeant, being in my second year, 
It proved quite difficult for me as I was very new to administration. Administration was something I had not done before. At this time, Jared says he helped me understand this and my ability to plan things for the company, but also while planning, to assess all variables of the situation so that I may better plan for those around me so no one is harmed and no one is offended in the process. And moving on to my senior year, I'm currently the standing battalion commander of the 137th Corps of Cadets, holding the rank of Cadet Major. I am the Supreme Ranking Officer of the Corps, and it is my current job this year to be the head officer in training, counseling, administration, planning all activities of the Corps, service learning projects, and any other duties given to me by those above me. My time in JRTC has assisted me up to this point, where now it fine tunes my skills, my ability to plan, to administrate, and to counsel those around me so that everyone turns out better in the end and everyone's properly trained. JRTC has also assisted me in my contemporary life, where I can now plan things out better, I can now have better dedication to my studies, and also given me an interest and showing me how important it is physical health is. My time here at St. John's has greatly benefited me, and I'd have to say I'm a better person because of it. At this time, I would now like to introduce the Battalion S2 Public Affairs Officer. Before we do that, I wanted to mention, like I mentioned, two years ago we introduced females into the school, and uh, I wanted to bring, and let me tell you, there was a lot of discussions and a lot of complaints by some alumni in terms of whether we should do this. However, we felt it was the right thing to do. And so I wanted to bring one of our females here, who was actually here from the very beginning, to come up and talk to you a little bit about her experiences uh, at the academy over the last year and a half. Hello there, I'm Cadet Second Lieutenant Isabella Griffin, the Battalion S2 Recruiting Officer. My first year, I had wanted to come to St. John's for a very long time, and luckily they accepted me to Cadre, which is a leadership program that helps people like me get into the school. I was very ambitious, and I wanted to become my current job, the S2. However, I became the sergeant of the female barracks. It was a great, great opportunity for me, especially in my first time being here. During this time, I learned how to cooperate with a device, diverse people, have direction, accountability, and learn empathy. My second year, I became an S2, finally. <laughs> As the S2, I take care of community service, morale of the core, and I narrate all events. This year, I have learned the greatest skill of a lifetime, which is endurance, time management, and completion of tasks. Thank you for having me. So to kind of summarize this thing, I know one of the things they wanted us to talk about was the uh, abilities to, uh, what we actually, what did we act, some of our, our wins that happened in, in the last, my term, 25 years. I can tell you that in the last 25 years, and I've kept statistics on this, we have a total of 36 uh, appointments to our service academies, that being the United States Military Academy at West Point, the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, and the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, and also some appointments to the Merchant Marine Academy in New York. Um, we also have probably, I'd say, a couple of two, three hundred Army ROTC scholarships. But that doesn't mean everybody is looking to go into the military. We have 95% of our graduates go on to college, and about 85% of them graduate from college and do very well. We have uh, all sorts of alumni that are very successful. Historically, we've had a few people, for example, uh, one of our alumni was the president of Panama back in the 90s. Um, we have several people that are congressmen, uh, and successful businessmen in, in Chicago. Also, I have to mention one other thing because we've been around a long time and we have been known by a lot of countries, I would say. Several years ago, we were approached by uh, one of the countries in the Middle East uh, asking, we, didn't, we really didn't know that they had 
they had placed one of their family members here at school and they wanted to see how we were treating them and what we were doing with them. And they were so pleased with what we had done that they asked us to uh, build a school like this academy, help them build a school like this academy in their country. Uh, we worked with them for a couple of years. We actually provided the uh, Department of Defense our curriculum through the Department of Defense, which was released. And so that, that school is actually out there now and doing the same thing we do now, only several thousand miles away. So overall, I have to say that we are a very, very, we're one of the best military academies in the country. Uh, I know we, there's some other schools that compete against us, but militarily and academically, we're a very, very strong country. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, I know we were given so much time to do this, and I hope that anybody that has any questions out there would just send me an email, and we certainly can uh, rejoin this conversation uh, personally. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope that you can hear me and uh, I apologize for the telephone view. Uh, so at this time, it's the only possibility I managed to got through to this uh, to this conversation. So uh, in upcoming 10 minutes, uh, I hope you to present you the Military Academy of Lithuania, uh, which is named after General Jonas Jamaitis. So more, more about him uh, later on. And uh, our military academy is quite young uh, if uh, compared to the worldwide uh, military academies. And uh, it has been restored only a couple of decades ago uh, when Lithuanian independence was restored. So in the front picture, you can see the actual uh, alumni of uh, our military academy, which are, you know, from the cadet to, to young generals. Uh, so that is uh, what we are proud of, uh, having uh, uh, several generals already who have uh, successfully uh, graduated uh, the Lithuanian military academy. So uh, uh, today I'm, I'm going to touch upon some history uh, quite briefly. Uh, our mission structure and, and vision and uh, our training program uh, which consists of leadership uh, military training and and academical stu stu studies and all the other activities that uh, are being held uh, with within our military academy oh, sorry so uh, the military school uh, was established uh, uh, not that far away in 1990s uh, so when we had uh, uh, Lithuanian Republic uh, existing and uh, so there was uh, an officer training school in Kaunas now it is in Vilnius so uh, after a few years, it was named after uh, former president Antanas Metona. And uh, since then, we have strong ties with presidential palace. So there is a strong tradition that uh, every year uh, the president, which is uh, on active duty at the state, uh, uh, graduates uh, the cadets of fourth course uh, and gives them a rank of first officer which is lieutenant uh, and the tradition is uh, to kneel down uh, in front of the uh, president which uh, uh, lays the sword on on your shoulder is still alive and the ceremonial is still the same on the on the parade ground of uh, the presidential palace so we're quite proud of this uh, event and uh, it, it is a very nice tradition held from from the 1920s uh, or so. 
So as, as, as many of you might know, uh, Lithuanian uh, uh, was occupied, uh, Lithuania was occupied uh, since 1940s and uh, remains so uh, till 90s. Uh, freedom fight, but nevertheless, uh, the officer, official officer training uh, school uh, was, uh, was seized to exist. So, um, in nineties, and uh, and it uh, hard times, and uh, in was. Uh, uh, not uh, was held only only military training. Uh, uh, only a few years later, introduced uh, academical studies uh, to gain a bachelor degree afterwards. In 1998, uh, military academy was for, was named after. Uh, very, very well known freedom fighter, General Jonas Jem and uh, actual president of, of Lithuania, uh, who was uh, resisting the occupation. So, coming to the modern times, uh, the military. The, the only institution uh, of, of uh, high education in Lithuania which uh, provides uh, two ways of, uh, of studies, so which is military training, uh, the basic officer training and uh, academical studies uh, for bachelor degree and also a possibility to study later on the master or doctorate degrees. Uh, it is all uh, state funded and all the cadets uh, and officers who train in uh, in military academy do not have to pay. It is part of their duty to Lithuanian armed, armed forces. Uh, during the four, four years of studies, uh, cadets have uh, the possibility to grow their leadership skills basic officer training knowledge on uh, on their uh, studies uh, uh, and we have uh, uh, a few uh, bachelor degree study programs also a few master degree studies and doctorate i will touch upon that a bit with uh, housing uh, Clothing, uniforms, um, equipment uh, for training, and uh, all the infrastructure for sports, uh, training, uh, living, and so on. Also, they are allowed to uh, exit the barracks and live in, in, in the city, with the exception that they have to be back. Uh, uh, that is, of course, on, on uh, the higher courses, not the first course. Uh, so, with the exception that they have to be back uh, since the morning uh, check and formation. So, uh, of course, uh, these do not apply. We'll have the uh, pandemic uh, closed down in military academy. So, uh, for six weeks now, the cadets are uh, in the barrack regime. Uh, so they have to stay within their barracks and all the contacts with the outside uh, people are restricted. So that is the uh, reality of today we have to face. So as, as you might uh, understand that uh, Military Academy has a mission to train and educate uh, well-rounded, critically thinking, uh, active and responsible officers, leaders who uh, 
are ready to follow the constitutional rights and duties, uh, cherish the values of Lithuania, Lithuanian people and armed forces and uh, all the society, and are ready to act in a dynamic and complex uh, security environment. Uh, we try to imply all the newest information about ongoing conflicts uh, around the world, so uh, and to implicate the training uh, that would be up to date, uh, as as you might understand, not not to sit within the Second World War methods and uh, to try to think outside of the box uh, whenever that is possible. Of course, not letting down all the all the necessary doctrines which have been written by blood, as you can imagine. And also we try to ensure uh, uh, the high quality officer training and education with the academical studies uh, as well. So the education concept is as follows, it's quite simple uh, and uh, held upon three pillars, which is leadership, uh, knowledge and skills. That is how to behave and what to know and what to do eventually. So every every cadet after four years has to be ready and capable to act as a platoon leader in uh, in Lithuanian armed forces, uh, with some exceptions to specialists when they gain uh, some some uh, positions as specialists in air force, uh, logistics, uh, uh, engineers, and and so on. Uh, selection and admission. So uh, the first stage is uh, that we have to conduct a professional attitude test. So usually now it's uh, an online meeting with a group of officers and civilians who estimate uh, uh, motivation and uh, readiness uh, of a of a candidate uh, to to enter military academy. Uh, we, we look at his uh, knowledge about uh, armed forces and, and an inside motivation and values that, that are, uh, we think, that are core things uh, to, to, be, to start with, to begin with, yes. Uh, second is the medical expertise. Uh, this is the quite strict uh, part, which... Uh, which uh, uh, well... Uh, restricts some some you know medical uh, issues. Uh, people people who have some medical issues uh, will not enter the military academy due to the possibilities that they get seriously injured, uh, having a a complex physical training and and some uh, heavy weight uh, backpacks and so on. So. Uh, the fitness and readiness and medic medical uh, medical part of, of a human being is is quite strict and and uh, this is the part of the ad admission then the, of course the security clearance we have to make sure that person is not uh, being uh, uh, judged or or held by police uh, records and was not uh, intervened with uh, any of uh, uh, drug activities. Uh, of course, then the admission is with the competitive ranking, as uh, as in every uh, university, we have to uh, admit people which uh, only have a s certain uh, uh, st exam exam degrees and uh, can follow the barrier of of their graduation from high school and if all is well the person is admitted and has to conduct uh, a study contract with the military academy and afterwards uh, uh, people go to basic cadet training course so during the years as as you saw uh, Leadership uh, training is one of the most valuable things, and uh, this goes not only through the official lectures, but uh, through the daily life. 
uh, people uh, studying here have to live within the strong military structures where all the cur courses are connected uh, via uh, leadership uh, chain and uh, higher courses take command on lower courses uh, they are uh, conducted into all, all the courses are being uh, uh, scheduled to, to platoons companies and so on so uh, fourth and third course and second course cadets get some uh, positions as as uh, leaders so second course as uh, sergeant uh, positions and uh, third and fourth course so already as officer positions so that's in this way they start to train their uh, leadership skills university stu studies so uh, as I told already, it is state-funded, subordinate to military of defense, uh, and uh, graduates receive uh, 